Eleven years ago, I was moving from London to Zurich. Advance wasn't quite born yet. However, my daughter was. She had just turned one year old, and I was back in the workforce, working as a consultant, <clears throat> helping my clients on mergers. I was on my first client-facing study out here in Switzerland. I had been surrounded by women in leadership position who were also working mothers, so I was extremely lucky knowing that. I loved my job. I loved giving the advice. I loved working with the teams. And I had been. This was a Friday, Friday afternoon, and we've had a super intense week on a merger I was supporting. I was packing up my bags, chatting to my team members in the room, to my clients, talking a bit about my weekend plans with my new family, what we were going to do that weekend. The client, mid 50s, white hair, three children at home, senior executive, stops me half sentence. Anna, you have a child. Where is she now? <laughs> well, with her dad. But Anna. Your child needs your mother. Why are you working? I was gobsmacked. It was as if someone had thrown a bucket of cold water on my head. Why was he asking me this? Why did he think that it was bad that I was working? I had just tasted the attitude towards working women in Switzerland. Women around the world face barriers, advancing in their career, advancing in leadership positions, and they face it especially when they become mothers. Some countries are on that journey a bit further ahead. Switzerland still has a way to go. But what I want to talk about today is how do we create a win-win situation for Switzerland? How do we change that narrative from kids or career to kids and career for both parents? Bear with me for a little bit of data. We did a study. <laughs> We did a study last summer. What really showed is that when women have children in Switzerland, it's really a point in time where they take a step back and where we actually lose talent in the Swiss market. We surveyed 600 women, and 80% of them said it was really hard coming back. They actually choose to go back. Um, 12 months later, rather than the four months of maternity leave, and one of the reasons being because it is so hard when they come back. In fact, statistics show one in seven women don't even come back at all, and majority choose to work part time. In Switzerland, we have one of the countries where you have the biggest gap between women and men working part time. Why? Well, we live in a society with very traditional role models. The mother is the good one, staying at home, looking after the children. Of course, the father needs to be in the workforce and supply for the family. Why is that? Why do we think that only women can take care of their children? Why do we think that women don't actually want to progress in their career? Fast forward a year. I've now actually moved to Switzerland, working here, living in the system, and I'm up for a big promotion, really big one. Been working really, really hard. I was a bit nervous though, because I'd gotten pregnant and I was expecting my second child. I was really nervous going to speak to my manager, talking about the promotion process I was about to enter, telling him I'm actually pregnant. My manager at the time looks at me. But Anna, of course we're going to put you forward. We'll make this process work around your pregnancy. We'll make you come in and present when you have the time, etc. The relief I felt hearing those words, knowing that my manager was behind me, the company was behind me, actually, I think it actually energized me to go through that process more, and I was actually going really the extra mile for the firm I was working for. Sadly, the response I got is not the average response women get in Switzerland when seeking promotions and being pregnant. Our study last summer showed that. Actually, women take a real step back from leadership positions once they are have taken a career break. 
50% were in leadership positions before they went on a break. Actually, only 30% come back into leadership positions after two career breaks, after having had two children. It's really tough. But then there was something that really surprised me. Do you here know about the maybe baby effect? Women in their 30s and 40s are promoted less because they might have a baby at some time. Let that sink in. Women in their 30s and 40s are promoted because maybe someone thinks they might want to have children at some point in time. That really made me furious. Why do we assume women do not want to progress their careers? Back to my story. I'm now in this promotion process, I have two children. They're preschool age, of course, right? Really small. I get the bills for private childcare, because that's the only thing available here. That's a hefty cost that we have in private childcare. I, hindsight, I'm so glad I took the decision to actually go and pay that money. It's a short-term cost, but it can have long-term consequences. I actually have a friend. She moved to Switzerland at the same time as me, has a very similar background, coming from the Nordic and the UK. When she had the two children, she chose not to go back because of that cost, because of the implication on the family Let's call her Ella, and I'll come back to Ella's stories in a little bit, but let's look at the facts. Switzerland is one of the world leaders in the developed world when it comes to the highest cost of childcare. A family with two kids have to pay a third of their income for childcare. No wonder many take the decision to actually have the mother stay at home. However, this short-term cost has some really long-term financial consequences for women. We heard it earlier. The gap, financial gap between women and men over a lifetime is 43 percent. Pension gap, 35 percent. It's massive. I learned actually on Monday, I was at, with ZKB, they had actually calculated what this actually means financially. What does it actually mean in, in Swiss francs? Over a lifetime of a woman, someone going, to, say, to 60 percent, what does it actually mean for their pension income? One million to 1.5 million, depending on the circumstances. Yes, you have a short-term cost for childcare, but the long-term financial implication and your career implications is something we all need to be very, very aware of and create much more awareness of. So let's be a bit specific. What does this actually mean? So how do we create this win-win vision for Switzerland? <clears throat> how do we ensure that we turn the narrative from kids or career to kids and career? First of all, for all the women out here, have a very conscious discussions with your partners about sharing household cores and child care ability. Also, really do the calculations of the short-term costs versus the long-term implications and financial losses. Fathers, and I'm super excited to see so many men out here. Really lean in. Be that partner that supports and takes the burden. But also, really be the one who can go and ask for flexible working conditions. We need to change the systems. And for all the companies, and many of you have huge influence on companies, leading companies here in Switzerland, let's create some flexibility around ramping up when someone comes back from maternity leave. Let's create some real parental leave policies that enable both parents to parent. And let's make sure we create a flexibility that ensures that mothers can be back and fathers can be back at work. And I think for all of us, let's break some mindsets here. Why does the mental load have to sit with the women? And why do we think it's only the women that can be the good parent? And why is it bad to have external childcare help? Do you remember my daughter, Kiki? She was a year old when I came here. She's today just turned 12. 
And um, my vision for Switzerland is that, you know, when she is at the age when I was when I came here, say 15, 20 years forward, she and her friends, who are all kind of pre-teenagers today in Switzerland, they can actually say that they're super proud to work for companies that allow flexible options to allow both parents to parents. They, as couples, have really conscious discussions around sharing that workload. And there's no stigma with taking, um, taking external childcare support as well. They are proud that Switzerland has turned around the narrative from kids or career to kids and career, and we're leading when it comes to both sides having a career and parents being parents. Thank you.